formal charge In this video, we'll learn how to assign formal charges for all atoms within a molecule. While discussing Lewis structures, we really have to discuss a concept called formal charge. This is the charge that the atom would have if all of the electrons in the bonds were shared equally. It is determined by taking the electrons that the atom owns within a molecule and subtracting that number from the original valence electrons. The original valence electrons we find from the periodic table. What about how many it owns in the molecule though? Its lone pairs are counted completely as its own. So if an atom has three lone pairs, that is six electrons that belong to that atom. And then it gets one electron from each bond. So if it has three lone pairs and one bond, that would equal to seven. This will make some more sense as we do some examples. Let's walk through water right now. For oxygen, it has six valence electrons. In this molecule, you see that it has two sets of lone pairs, which gives it four electrons, and it also has two bonds, and so it gets one from each bond. That gives it six minus six is zero. Each of the hydrogens act the same, so we'll talk about it for just one. Hydrogen has one valence electron, and it has one electron that comes from the bond. It doesn't have any lone pairs. So that's one minus one equals zero. And that's true for the other hydrogen as well. And so all atoms in this molecule have zero as their formal charge. Let's do an example. Pause the video and see how far you can get on your own and then come back. Here we have OCl minus. Let's talk through the oxygen first. Oxygen has six valence electrons. In this molecule, it has six from the lone pairs and one from the bond, so for a total of seven. This gives us a negative one charge. For the chlorine, it has seven valence electrons, which we can get from going to the periodic table. And I have earlier videos on how to do that um, if you need help with that, and I'll link those at the end. Here, we have six from the lone pairs and one from the bond. This gives a total of seven minus seven equals zero as its charge. Also notice that these add up to be the charge on these species. So the species has a negative one charge, and you can see that negative one from the oxygen and zero from the chlorine will add up to be negative one. And this should always be true. If the charge on your species is zero, it should add to be zero. If there is a charge on your species, because you're talking about a polyatomic ion, then the charges of each individual atom should add to be the charge on the molecule. Let's try another. Pause, see how far you get this time. Come back when you're ready. All right, so technically each hydrogen does need to be done independently, but they're all gonna be the same. Hydrogen's basically always gonna be the same for the most part, there's a few exceptions. Um, and because of that, I'm just gonna do it one time, and then you need to assume that that's the same for all four, but you could walk through it for all four as well. And in fact, actually you should. So let's do nitrogen first. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, which we can get from the periodic table, but as a part of the structure, it only has four. It doesn't have any lone pairs, but it has four bonds, and so it gets one from each bond, giving four total. We add this up, and that gives us a plus one charge. Now, pick a hydrogen, any hydrogen. Hydrogen has one valence electron, and in the structure, it also has one electron, because it only gets one from the bond, and it doesn't have any lone pairs. This gives a total charge of zero. And same thing here, we have a polyatomic ion, it has a plus one charge, and notice that the nitrogen plus all four hydrogens, which are all zero, add up to be plus one. So why do we care, right? Assigning formal charges lets us determine if a particular Lewis structure is favorable or not. If there's two possible Lewis structures, it will tell us which one is the best. We want to minimize formal charge, okay? So picking the best structure involves minimizing formal charges. Let's do an example to talk about that. I want you to choose the best Lewis structure from the structures below. I already wrote out the formal charges for you. Of course, I wouldn't do this on any sort of exam or assessment, right? I, you would need to go through and write the Lewis structures. Um, but just for brevity, I wrote them all in. A good self-assessment 
technique right now would actually be to take each structure, write the formal charges in yourself and see if you get the same thing that I did. All right, so which one is gonna be most ideal from these three structures? The only way to really tell that is by looking at the formal charges because without the formal charges, they all have an octet and so all of the rules are followed. But if we look at our, the, our formal charges, a clear winner comes out. This one is way lower than the other ones. So we want our formal charges to be as close to zero as possible. These have two zeros and a negative one. And the negative one is on a reasonably electronegative element too. So that adds credibility as well. Uh, generally, when you get formal charges, if possible, you want to put negative charges on more electronegative species. And you wanna put positive charges on less electronegative species. And so in some of these cases, you might get a choice on where you put the formal charge. Negative formal charges go on electronegative species, positive formal charges go on less electronegative species. In review, you should know how to assign formal charges for each atom within a molecule. You take the valence electrons and you subtract the electrons that the species owns in the molecule. The formal charges on each individual atom should always add up to be the total for the molecule. If there's no charge, that means it's zero, and so it should add up to be zero. We use formal charges to choose the correct Lewis structure, or it might be a little bit better right now to say the best Lewis structure, because in organic chemistry, you'll also learn how to use some of the other ones. Generally, you want to minimize formal charge, where minimize here means keep them as close to zero as possible. If you get a choice on where to put the charges, negative charges go on electronegative species, positive charges go on least electronegative species.